Hey guys, this is Justin back with an engineer's perspective. And I shot a video and I think I called it Edge Geometry 101. And in that video, I basically talked about how on a knife that for it to be a good a cutter, that it comes down mostly to the actual edge angle and then also the thickness right behind the edge and that the stock thickness is only going to play a role in in your cutting is if you're cutting into wedgy things like an onion or a butternut squash or something like that so in uh, this uh, episode of I guess geometry 102 I've got my America coffee mug here uh, we're gonna be talking about the edge angle and just angles in general, but mostly the edge angle and how to find the perfect edge angle. What does that process look like? And how do you know whether or not you've achieved it? I've got a whole bunch of knives here, uh, pocket knives, kitchen knives. These are all knives that I have or am on the road to finding the, the perfect angle. Well, Maybe, eh, not really. Those ones, yes. These ones, yeah. But regardless, we're going to talk about this. Okay. So this comes up all the time in, like, Facebook groups. You know, hey, what's the, the perfect edge angle? What's, what's the best angle uh, for uh, this knife or that knife? And uh, the correct answer is it depends. But technically speaking, odds are that if you have a properly hard knife, that your optimum EDC knife edge angle is probably going to be between 15 and 20 degrees per side. And if you've got a properly hard Japanese knife, it's probably going to be between 10 and 15 degrees per side. And if you've got a properly hard German style knife, it's probably between 17 to 20 degrees per side. So technically uh, you can give those answers, but there's a big difference between 17 and 20 degrees in terms of when you're actually using it. <clears throat> so let's just talk about how we decide what angles to put. So for one, the only way to know the perfect angle for a knife is uh, this combination of factors. What is the steel? It's chemistry. How was it heat treated? How hard is it? What are you cutting and how are you cutting it? Roughly five factors. So, and if any of these factors varies, then the answer varies. So if one day you're doing X and the other day you're doing Y, then the answer to that's gonna vary, right? So you basically, try it's a trial and error until you get it right for the bulk of what you're doing it's easier to do with kitchen knives because it's you're in the kitchen versus these might do anything but anywho let's just get into uh into it so how do i find how did i find the perfect angle for this cpm 10 v for myself well it came from the factory at about 18 degrees per side maybe or so and uh, first thing to say is that when you get a brand spanking new knife is the edge that's put on it from the factory is probably going to be worthless the way that they are sharpened is the term that people use is it's a fatigued edge or a burnt edge and basically this edge comes down so microscopically fine that even the best, slowest, coolest belt sharpeners are gonna end up heating up this edge and it'll actually reduce the hardness of the edge. Or what it can also do is it can get it so hot that it'll soften it and then it'll re-harden, but without a temper, so it'll be very brittle. So that's a big reason why a lot of people think S30V is brittle because they use that factory edge and it chips and that's because that edge is burned. So, the first thing to do is you have to get rid of that factory edge. So you can be like me and I just stick the edge right on a stone and I cut it off and I sharpen it 
Usually it takes about three to five sharpenings to completely remove that steel. So that's the first thing. Decide how you want to get rid of the factory edge. Same goes for these knives, Japanese knives, maybe not so much because some of them are, a lot of them are hand sharpened. Uh, but you get down to the good steel. So yeah, like I think most people, you can just use your knife. Just use it when it gets dull, sharpen it. Use it, dull, sharpen it. Do that, you know, three to five times. So then at that point, you've gathered some data and uh, you've learned how to sharpen. And at that point, you ask yourself, when I was using the knife, did it roll? Did it chip? Did it cut like I wanted it to? All right? So if it did not roll and it did not chip, that means it can go thinner, okay? And uh, whether or not you wanna put in that effort is the, did it perform like I wanted it to? So I like as thin edge as possible. So if it didn't roll and it didn't chip, I'll even write those down, like a little presentation. So roll, chip, so if the, Yes or no. So if the answer is no to both of those, that means you go lower. Uh, if you have experience with steels, you can guess. So like with this one, I went straight to 15 degrees per side. And I knew that'd probably be even on the, the obtuse side for this steel at this hardness. But I knew I was going to use this one a little bit harder. Uh, like because I got this knife the summer of 2020. And I was doing some pretty hard work with it. So I put it down to 15 degrees per side and it held up, it held up, but I had some uh, like PVC pipe, exactly like this, except for inch and a half. And I was doing a lot of this to deburr that type of stuff out of there. So I was doing a lot of this type of work. And uh, when I was doing that, it rolled which was surprising considering the hardness on these is supposed to be like 64, 64 and a half. So I can see there it didn't roll, but it was tending to anyways. So what that told me is that, okay, 15 degrees per side is too narrow because it's not hard enough to support the geometry, so it's gonna roll. So I could have gone up to 16, but I knew that that was abnormally hard use for what this blade's life will be in the long run. So I just left it. But technically, if that's what I was using this for every day, then that means I found the perfect angle for this. But like now in my life right now, I don't do this kind of shenanigans. So I could go lower with this probably yet because it hasn't chipped or rolled since then. So you keep going lower and lower until one of these two things happens. Now, which one of these is going to happen? Well, that depends. Rolling occurs if you have a soft steel, typically, and chipping occurs if you have a hard steel. But there is the, the balance here is evidently speaks to 10V. It's so, it was so tough that at that hardness it rolled before it chipped. So that's pretty impressive. So that's how I did it for that knife, as you see rolling. So let's talk about a different phenomenon is the chipping. So Maximate is very hard, very high carbide volume. It'll outcut 10V, and this is like a 67, 69 Rockwell versus like 64 Rockwell. And uh, it's got big carbides in it. So I was using this, doing the same thing. It did not roll. And I think this was probably closer to like 17 degrees per side. But, so it didn't roll. I thought everything was fine and dandy. But then at the end of the day, I'm cutting and it just doesn't feel right. And what I noticed, even looking edge down, it didn't look like there was blunting. But I could feel in the edge and a little bit with my fingernail that it had tiny little microchips in it. And like you almost don't even notice them. So at that point, you know that you've gone too low once again. So if I was at 17 degrees per side, and I'm like, all right, I know that's not good enough. So then you go back up to 18 and boom, you've got the optimized edge for this knife. Once again, that's abnormally hard use. So I didn't do that for maximum. So those are the two things you'll see. Does it roll? Does it chip? <clears throat> so like, why didn't I go up an angle? 
because the third question is, does it perform to my liking? And the answer on this Maximit is no. I wish it was thinner. So I definitely don't want to go more on that one. This at 15 degrees per side actually feels pretty good. So let's look at another example of a knife, this pair of three in Rex 45. This knife is one, uh, this is why I like Rex 45 so much, is at 15 degrees per side. I was doing everything that these two were, but it was not rolling and it was not chipping. So I'm trying to optimize an edge here, and this is a six steel. This is at like 12 degrees per side right now. You can kind of see how big that bevel is. So at this point, you gotta make a decision though. You can see that on all of my knives, that the bevels are pretty big. So if you are one who cares about aesthetics and don't want a really huge bevel, then you're gonna have to consider that. And there is a way around that, and that's called thinning. And that's something I'll go over in my next video more. So yeah, I guess maybe I shouldn't even talk about it. That's why I brought this knife out here. I won't talk about it in this one. So. Right now I've got Rex 45 at 12 degrees per side and in my use on the things that I cut, it doesn't roll, it doesn't chip. So that's how I optimize the edges on these guys. So let's talk about that, those same phenomenons but in these kitchen knives here. So this is just a Victorinox Fibrox uh, seven inch Santoku and this is uh, uh, X50 CR MOV 15 steel at like 56 Rockwell. And it's the same steel that Cold Steel uses in their like light cheap series, like 1.4116 or something like that. 14116. And uh, it's thin stock, it's full flat ground, and behind the edge on these guys tends to be like eight to ten thousandths. So really great cutting geometry, but from the factory, they put them at 15 degrees per side. So that's great for cutting geometry. The problem is the second is you cut something is it just rolls right over. So I was telling you that 10 V in hard use, which kitchen use isn't was rolling. This stuff rolls right away. And this is the thing with this stuff though, is you have to be diligent. That's why I'm trying to make a video on this is because it took me about five days of using a whole set of these whoopsies you stay there we go to realize what was going on because i would cut with it and it would lose its edge i'd steal it back i'd keep cutting with it but what i noticed when i was cutting up things like apples uh, is that when you cut an apple with a sharp knife you should be able to let it sit out all day and it won't turn brown but when you've got a dull knife can you hear those geese? Excuse me, anyways. Is uh, I was cutting up apples and other things that will like oxidize and like rust and they were doing it. And I was like, that shouldn't be happening. And it's because I was rolling the edges on these. So that means it had to go to thicker geometry. Same thing was happening with this Wustoff, same steel, but at 58 Rockwell. I put it down to about 15, 16 degrees per side because from the factory is at about 19 and it just didn't cut. It just, I was ready to sell this thing because it just sucked in the kitchen bad. So I put it down to that low angle and it felt so much better. But once again, I was noticing those same kind of issues. So I bumped this up from 15 up to 17 ish and uh, we're back in business. So now it's not rolling and it's doing everything I need. It still feels better than it did from the factory. So, so that's how I've optimized those ones with rolling and that's how that occurs. Something I did different with the Fibrox. So let's say you don't want to have, well, whatever, is uh, you don't want to lose the feel of that 15 degree per side geometry you don't want to go up to 20, but you still have a soft steel. So there is a way around it, and I'm still experimenting with it to confirm it officially. But as I left the 15 degree per side geometry on these, and then I used the Spyderco Sharp Maker on the 20 degree per side setting to do a 20 degree micro bevel on here. 
so that you've still got the cutting power of a 15 degree angle, but you've got the strength of the 20. And then that way, you don't have to sacrifice that cutting feel. And that's been working out really good on this Victorinox, on these Fibrox knives. I've got a bunch of them because I really like I really like what they what they offer for the price. Um, but they're not my daily drivers. But anyways, so that's how I optimize this one is by putting that 20 degree micro bevel on it. So that's talked about rolling. Now let's talk about chipping. So this is a Takamura uh, 210 millimeter Gyoto. It's a Japanese knife. It's made out of a steel called Chromax and it's an ingot steel with about seven and a half percent carbon in there and some other things. It's an okay alloy, but it's an ingot steel and they run this thing freaking hard at like 64, 65 Rockwell is the target. And that's just too dang hard for uh, an ingot steel with that kind of stuff in it. And uh, it, it definitely can't hold it. And the geometry Takamura sends knives to you with is just so thin, so, so thin. The first time I used it, I just exploded the edge on it, but it sharpens like a beauty, like a blue number two, if you're familiar at all with it. Uh, so I fixed it and uh, I increased it from probably what was about nine degrees per side up to like 12, because I was pretty sure it would hold it. And it seemed to be, but you know what? I would be cutting, I'm like, what is going on? Like, this is just not lasting like I want it to. I'd cut paper, I'd shave my hair, I'd be like, eh. like, it feels right, but it's just not working. Like, what's going on? And I didn't think I was getting chipping. I was looking at it, I was feeling it. I could not detect the chipping in it, but it was. So I kept going up 13, 14, Currently at, it's about 14-ish degrees per side, 15 maybe, but 14 is probably what I'd say. Now the edge retention lasts like it should because even though I couldn't detect it, it was chipping out microscopically at the edge. So I knew that I had to go up. And that's how you optimize your edge angle is, is you work with the angle you got. So yeah, get rid of that factory uh, sharpening, work with the angle you got. Does it roll? Does it chip? If the answer is no, go one degree thinner. Use it for a while. Does it roll? Does it chip? Nope. Go one degree thinner. I really recommend the one degree at a time because it's kind of dumb to waste all that steel going from like 20 degrees per side down to 15 just to figure out that it chips or rolls at 15 and then you go up to 16 it still does and maybe you'll end up at 18 degrees per side all the while you've increased the the size of this bevel and wasted steel so if you don't know where it's going to end up for your use just go one degree at a time it'll save you time in the long run and it'll save you heartache and it won't waste your steel but yeah the way they'll manifest themselves is a lot more casual than you'd think especially on the 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 kitchen knives you're probably not going to see some catastrophic like you know chunk like a rock that just busts out of there it's probably not going to happen it's probably going to be very minute and you just kind of got to pay attention like does this make sense should this be lasting as long as it is and yeah you just adjust from there if you don't want to sacrifice good factory geometry try a micro bevel the spider co sharp maker sharp maker makes it super easy you can absolutely do micro bevels on stones, I recommend higher grit ones, probably uh, 1,000 and above. This is an 800. And yeah, just lay down, uh, do a few swipes each side, a micro bevel on there, and it'll add some strength to the edge. So yeah, that's it. That's what I got. That is uh, how you find the optimum edge. It depends on the steel, the heat treat, the hardness, you and what you're cutting. And the way to tell the amalgamation of those things coming together is to answer those two questions. So that's all I've got. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Bye.